The National Security Advisor, Major General Baba Ghana Mungono, retired, has warned all separatist groups against disrupting the November 6 Anambra state governorship election with the Buhari with, and President Buhari's arrival to Imo State. Residents complied with the IPOP initial sit-at-home directive. Now, the big question is, who's in charge? Well, joining us to discuss this is Public Affairs Analyst Ambrose Igboke and the Director of Public Affairs Igbo Leadership Development Foundation, Law Mefo. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you for you. hosting us. Great. Um, so, Mr. Mefo, I'm going to start with you because um, the big question is, there's a lot of compliance with the sit-at-home, um, you know, order given in the southeastern states. Um, one would have thought that maybe it's just about um, the president's visit, but this sit-at-home order has been going on. There have been complaints about trucks that have been burned, um, laden with goods that were supposed to be taken into these southeastern states. There have been several complaints about this sit-at-home order. And this is not an order coming from the states, but it's an order coming from IPOP. So it begs the question, who's in charge? Oh, well, I, I me, um, what is going on in the southeast since May of this year? Um, it, it has been uh, most embarrassing. And um, before May 2021, southeast was uh, the most uh, peaceful uh, section of Nigeria. And uh, today it is home to unknown gunmen. Uh, all manner of uh, extreme violence, um, you know, is at play now there. And um, they sit at home. Uh, it, 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 it issued by IPOB uh, since uh, the arrest and um, uh, bring it back to the country of Fernand de Cano for continuation of his trial. Um, it, it shows uh, two or three things. One, um, it shows uh, that uh, the political leaders of the Southeast are not really in charge. And um, I say so because even the people are staying at home in uh, adherence to the order or the directive given to them by a non-state actor. Uh, it simply means that, that they cannot um, uh, order them otherwise. Most of the people who stay at home are not necessarily staying at home because they want to stay at home. They are staying at home because uh, their security cannot be guaranteed. And um, even that is the case, it, 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 you know, it, it simply means that um, it's not only uh, the solidarity for uh, Nam the Kano that is at play here. People are afraid of their lives. As we <laughs> speak now, about one or two hours ago, a traditional ruler from my Buleri was killed. You know, killed this evening. You can check it out, check it out. It's uh, trending all over the social media. Very gory picture of uh, the, you know, uh, assassination of a traditional ruler of a town in Anambra State, a Buleri. You know, it, it's, it's sad, but it's going on now. The point is, if um, even the, the governors, particularly, who are named in the Constitution as the um, chief and security officers of their state cannot guarantee uh, lives, uh, uh, you know, security of lives and property, then there is a problem. Okay. Um, well, they, they can always tell you that they cannot command anybody, but uh, they, 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 they should do more. They can do more. They, their counterparts in uh, southwest Nigeria using Amonte Kun and other uh, uh, extra uh, ordinary measures are rising to the security challenges of their region. We expect that the Southeast governors should do the same. And okay. if you bring it to, if you, if you, if you, if you bring it to I, the um, warning of the National Security Advisor. We will, well, we will, we will come to that. Just hold, just, just hold that thought. Okay. We will come to that. Let me go to Ambrose. I hope, All right. Ambrose, I hope you can hear me. Um, just as I asked um, Mr. Law about who's in charge, he's saying that most of the people who are uh, complying to the state sit-at-home order is because they're afraid for their lives. And they're not afraid for their lives because, one, 
that we do not have security operatives. They're not afraid because we do not have governments, because we do have all of these things in place. So again, I ask, who really is running the southeastern state? We saw the president visit a state yesterday, and we saw governors, we saw commissioners, we saw chiefs and leaders. But if non-state actors seem to be giving orders and people are actually complying because of or out of fear, what does that say about southeastern states? Well, well first of all, the uh, passage policies of this uh, present administration against the southeast makes it a common burden for people from the Southeast region. Uh, most of them feel alienated. Uh, for example, look at the railway tracks, brand new railway tracks that are going on around the country. Only Southeast does not have the new railway gauge. Um, a lot of plants, other infrastructure that were other parts of the country, only the Southeast was left out. And then uh, some of the utterances of this administration is chewed towards the, uh, against the, the Southeast. While we are while the Southeasters are bleeding from base, um, the IPOP cashed in on these sentiments and then went on that to become very, very popular. We should bear in mind that IPOP did not start today. IPOP has been there even when Jonathan was the, uh, was the president. And they were doing their radio broadcast broadcast even at that time. But because they were largely ignored uh, by the federal government then, uh, they didn't have the verb. So, say, so you're saying that this federal government has given so much credence to these non-state actors and that's why they've become so powerful? They said what? Are you insinuating that maybe the federal government has given too much attention to these non-state actors, especially IPOP, yes, and that's that why is, they seem to be powerful? First, first of all, giving so much attention to IPOP issues, then secondly, negligence of the Southeast in many of the uh, dispositions. Like, for example, when they mentioned the famous uh, concentration on the 97% that voted the president in and the five percent uh, rather than they must not do anything for the five percent that they didn't vote to me. Then also there was uh, the issue of when this uh, you know confrontations with the security agencies with IPOP heightened and that has also become major popular. But basically the problem is the same issues of security that is happening across the country. Our security agents, agents are overstretched, and there's a lot of a gap in the security architecture in terms of securing lives and properties all across the country. So that gap is there, and the fear of people of what might happen. And for example, we're just coming out from the ugly incidents of uh, NSAS protests that ended uh, less than a year ago. We saw how people lost their lives. We saw how, you know, the calamities that happened, you know, during that period. And then uh, the issue of people being asked to death in broad daylight and everywhere, you know. So it's, it's people are afraid. So when you people a, 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 a group says don't come out, and the government says you can go about your normal business, and you come out, and something happens to you, and you look look around, I mean you are you are basically on your own. What do you do? So to avoid uh, this kind of scenarios. People just stayed away. Okay. Okay. People stayed away more out of fear. Okay. I, I'm going to come to you again uh, on the Anambra polls, but let me go back to Mefor Law. Um, 
the, the interesting thing to note in what's happening in the South is, just like Ambrose has said, is that they feel like they are the poor cousins. They feel like they have not, they've been shortchanged. They've not gotten uh, as much attention from the federal government as other um, you know, regions in the country. Do you share uh, I I in that particular analogy, do you believe that the Southeast has been given the short end of the stick? Again, um, if this is how the Southeast feels and they have complained and nothing is being done, um, what do you think the challenge is? Is it the state governors themselves that are not liaising with the federal government to bring more uh, attention to those parts of this, the country? Or is it just that, really, the South is, is, has, has been abandoned? I think uh, you used uh, the right word. Um, the, the, the South East is uh, totally excluded from uh, what is going on. In uh, terms of uh, reckoning, in terms of uh, begin, being given the um, rightful place in this scheme of things, in terms of um, infrastructure, my uh, friend and brother just uh, talked about, uh, he used the example of uh, railway infrastructure. Uh, the, the, the Southeast is clearly excluded. And um, the second the Niger bridge that is going on now is going on because... Uh, the loan uh, from which uh, it is being financed, the second major bridge was uh, 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 mentioned as one of the three projects that the, not even a loan, it's, it's a repatriated loot from one of the past leaders of the country. The, the country, I think the U.S., insisted that second major bridge and two other broad projects should be used, you know, uh, they, they should be uh, constructed using uh, the, the, the money being uh, returned to the country. So if you remove the second Niger bridge, what else can be said to be going on in the service? You know, a little bit of uh, construction work going on along um, Enugu on the uh, expressway, a little bit of it, Enugu, uh, Potako expressway, and that is where it ends, nothing else. If you go to the south, there is clearly no federal government presence. That is the truth. There is nothing, you can't see any major infrastructure, nothing. Petrochemicals, there's nothing you can really find in the southeast. Unless you want to talk about the ubiquitous uh, police stations and the army checkpoints, you find at every pool hmm. where the southeasterners have been extorted openly, you know. It, it, unless you want to use that as... Um, a measure of federal government presence. If you remove that, nothing else is found. So wow. the exclusion of the Southeast from the scheme of things is there. It is not, um, it's not something that can be argued by anybody. Wow. And um, the, 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 the few uh, appointments we've gotten are appointments that are guaranteed by the Constitution. If you find uh, one or two uh, ministers, it's because the Constitution said that you know, every state must have a minister. Yeah, but beyond that, mention the other appointments made under under uh, 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 General Buhari. Uh, you, you know that uh, was really extended to the southeast. If you check the 14, 14 uh, um, frontline security agencies in Nigeria, not a single person is an evil man. So the wow. issue of ex exclusion is very obvious. It's very clear. Mm. You know and. Um, the place is still is is, uh, is 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 really left naked and open, because uh, it, it, they are not involved even in uh, the security architecture of the zone. If you go to the entire southeast, the five police commissioners, their none is an Igbo man, DSS none is an Igbo man, civil defense none is an Igbo man. Just check it, name it, all of them, none is an Igbo man. The, the, also, the, the, at the same the, time, and in the zone, none is, none, is, none is an Igbo man. So that is, I'm trying to give you a scenario yeah, that but... really led, you know, these are the things that led to the growing security and restiveness okay. that you find in the region. Well, well, we have to quickly wrap up. So I'm going to go, Ambrose, I'm just going to give you just a few seconds to just look at the issue raised by uh, Babagana Mongono as to the elections that are coming up in a number, of course, in November. And we've already seen things that have happened that has led up to, um, you know, the campaign process and the back and forth 
Um, like I said at the beginning, the killings, uh, the burning and destruction of um, properties. Uh, this message by Baba Gana Mongono to IPOP, directly to IPOP, um, what do you think it means and how well do you think IPOP is going to receive it going forward? Do we see free, fair, credible elections and a peaceful, non-violent one coming up in November 6? I think the Anambra, uh, the, the, the politicians in Anambra contesting these elections are the ones heating up the polity in the states. We, we have seen all the, uh, you know, court actions, counter court actions, and, uh, you know, going to secure uh, injunctions in different courts across the country, unnecessarily charging up the uh, polity. And this has been the case with Anambra State always. In every election cycle, I think it behoves the Guru to be talking more to the Anambra politicians. Okay. Because it, it, it is, it is uh, becoming too so alarming. It was only in Anambra State in the history of Nigeria that a sitting governor was uh, kidnapped and taken to unknown places by his own political acolyte. So, and right now, we expected Anambra to have come down, to have learned from the lessons of history. Well, yeah. they are not still learning. So, first of all, the politicians to tone down okay. the narrative. Okay. And then they can now talk to their people. Election is not war. What in Anambra says is since election is warfare. Well, so, uh, the, the basic thing, first of all, is to tackle the security from the level of the politicians all right. because these politicians are control followers all right if the politicians can turn down the narrative their followers also will turn down their actions all right we have to go Ambrose. Uh, and the way this is achieved i probably have no place to even play a uh, role to play in the election all right, we have to go because time, our time is up. Ambrose Igboke is a political analyst and, of course, MEFO Law uh, is also, have, has also been part of the conversation. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. We have to wrap up now. Hello, can I say a word? Just well, we, we really have to go now. Um, I'm so sorry we do not have time. We're really out of time. Uh, so once again, thank you guys. Um, we have to quickly look at what's happened all through the week. Let's quickly show you our weekly roundup on Plus Politics. And when we come back, I'll be saying my goodbyes. Now, I don't share my colleague's viewpoint on this issue. Um, yes, he's right to say that um, wherever the chairman comes from, will inform some other uh, positions. But um, that will not be a factor because what you see is that in PDP, they actually think about where the president is coming from first before deciding where the chairman will come from. And then they go to the convention and then make that, you know, uh, a reality. Um, in the case of uh, PDP, it's to totally different from EPC. PDP has a zoning arrangement, you know, written in their constitution. There is often a correlation between unstable democracy, unstable leadership, and incessant coup d'etat in Africa. I mean, for example, in the past 40, in the past four decades, we've had about a hundred coup d'etat um, and 200 successful, uh, two, uh, hundred successful coup d'etat and 200 attempted coups in, in Africa. That's really, really troubling for a particular nation where um, its earliest um, independence was in the 1950s. We are not saying that people should give them on the same coin, but we are simply saying that the promises they made to Nigerians, the things they told Nigerians, Nigerians will have, Nigerians are not saying it. And we are crying. Let me use the example of Kaduna, for example. When we started crying in 2018, 2019, about banditry and kidnapping, we were called as if we are alarmists. Nobody listened to us. Today, what we were crying and asking government to do is what is, has actually consumed the entire state. Had they been government listening to us at that time and act responsibly, they would probably not be where we are. You would you know, imagine that most of the people that are angry for Jonathan to come back, if the story is true, are you know, northern politicians. And the major reason why they are trying to do that is simply because it is only a Jonathan presidency that would assure them of, you know, for, that would assure the country of a four-year presidency.
city before it goes back immediately to the north because he had already done four years. Any other southern politician will remain in power for eight years. We have amazing Nigerians on the international scene doing great. We have one in the AFDB, we have one in WTO. We have so many Nigerians, some of them we've never even heard of them because they're not, not politicians per se. We have people who are capable of doing a lot of things. But when it comes down to the politics of it, can we really point to those people? I mean, even in the Southwest, we just keep talking about one person. Where are the other guys? In closing. Yeah, um, the other guys and women are there. They're there. They're even within the political parties. But because you do not have a sufficient amount of people who put Nigeria first and who will say that this is a person that can lead us in the direction we want to go in the next four years, then you have those who are businessmen, who are political jobbers, as they say, controlling the primary election process of the of the um, of the parties. The Independent National Electoral Commission is not in competition with the National Assembly. Uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission is also not in confrontation with the National Assembly. Now, I, I think that there's some level of misunderstanding and misstatement relating uh, to what is going on. Um, I, I read the statement uh, from the National Assembly by the spokesperson of the of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now. There is nobody is arguing relating to the powers of the National Assembly to make laws for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. In fact, Section 4, Subsection 1 of the Constitution and, uh, and Section 4, Subsection 2 of the Constitution gives the National Assembly the power to make laws for the peace, order and good governance of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So how do educationists like you and the Kechi push for these um, meager portions of for education budgeting uh, to be increased because whether we like it or not it might not necessarily look nice for them in their blueprint or when they're doing like a scorecard for themselves but how can we push for this to become a big priority for all our politicians because whether we like it or not there is some politics to it absolutely I mean, I, you know, I just read that um, the education budget, the federal one, was about just about uh, 6.3, you know, and it's about 742 billion out of about, say, 11 trillion or so was earmarked to education this year. That is extremely low. So it just tells you that the government is not paying attention to education at all. This is a time when we're saying that we have a lot of out of school. This is a time when we have insurgency issues. This is a time when COVID has caused a lot of loss of learning. I mean, if you see the kind of money that is being put towards COVID in every other country, a lot of schools have been shut down for the greater part of last year. A lot of public schools are still doing staggered lessons. So you just wonder um, what our government is looking at. Well, we hope you had an interesting week with us on the show. We'll be back next week with the bumper package, as usual, talking about masses arising in Nigeria and, of course, on the African continent. I am Mary Anacombe. Have a pleasant weekend.